As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And our Gospel this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke. We are in chapter 4. This is actually the continuation of the Gospel last Sunday. If you remember in the Gospel last Sunday, that was the time when Jesus went to Galilee and he started his public ministry. And then we are told from Galilee, of course, he went to Nazareth. Now, of course, we know Nazareth is, of course, the native place of Jesus. That's where he grew up. Of course, we know that Jesus was born in, where was he born? In Bethlehem. But even though he was born in Bethlehem, he grew up in Nazareth. So if he grew up in Nazareth, practically everybody in Nazareth knew him. They were like neighbors. That's why imagine Jesus, as in the Gospel last Sunday, we were told it was Sabbath day. And so what does Jesus do on Sabbath? He goes to the synagogue. And remember, he was given the scroll. And the scroll actually comes from prophet Isaiah. And of course, that was the prophecy of Isaiah in the Old Testament that there will be a Savior. In fact, the very last line of our Gospel last Sunday is the beginning of our gospel tonight, this Sunday. After reading the scroll taken from the book of Isaiah, he sat down and then Jesus said, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing, which actually, of course, confirms in the gospel of St. Luke, of course, that Jesus is already the fulfillment of that prophecy by given by Isaiah that there will be a Savior. And of course, my dear brothers and sisters, in our gospel tonight, we are told that after hearing Jesus say that, what was the reaction of the people? They said, and all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. So the rea re initial reaction of the people upon hearing, of course, the words of Jesus, they were amazed. They were astounded. Unfortunately, after being amazed at the words of Jesus, all of a sudden, they realized who Jesus was, that he is their neighbor. They practically know Jesus because he grew up in that place in Nazareth. That's why they said, it's like to exaggerate even the lines of the Gospel of St. Luke. It's like saying, wait a minute, isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph? Now, of course, remember my dear brothers and sisters during that time, Normally, the expectation of the people is if you are born, if you are a son and your father is a carpenter, what do you expect the son to become? To be a carpenter. Because during that time, we don't have colleges, we don't have universities. Normally, you learn the trade of your father if you're a son. If you're a daughter, what happens to you? You learn the work of your mother. You just inherit the work of your father or your mother. That's why imagine Jesus after saying this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. He claims to be the Savior. So at first, they were amazed at the words of Jesus. All of a sudden, they realized, wait a minute. Isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph? He cannot be the Savior. We actually know him when he was young, when he grew up here. And how can he? First of all, my dear brothers and sisters, it's a big question mark for them. For Jesus to be a rabbi, you don't expect him to be a teacher. He is the son of Joseph. He is supposed to be a carpenter. And worse, allow me to just say worse, for him to claim to be the Messiah, to be a savior. That's just something unimaginable for them. And of course, Jesus knew the reaction. That's why Jesus said, surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. Unfortunately, my dear brothers and sisters, 
we all know that Jesus will not be able to perform great miracles in Nazareth. Why? Because they did not believe in Him. They did not have faith in Jesus. That's why Jesus, as a continuation, He says, And He said to them, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of this that Elijah was sent. Do you remember that story? You find that in the first book of Kings. Remember the story when there was famine for three and a half years and Elijah was the prophet during that time and God said, Elijah, there will be no rain for a long period until I say so. God said that. There will be famine. Therefore, Elijah, what do you do? Go east of the Jordan and cherry and wadi cherry. And I will provide you with water and bread and food for you. And the first book of Kings tells us that ravens or birds would bring bread and meat to Elijah. And he would always have water in that area where God told him to go. Unfortunately, the famine was very severe. The drought was very long. He ran out of water in the area. That's why God said, Elijah, get out of there and go to Sarifat. And in Sarifat, I have assigned a widow who will take care of your needs. And when Elijah entered Sarifat, what did he say? What did he see? There was a widow who was gathering sticks. You remember that story? And as he was gathering sticks and Elijah saw her, imagine, Elijah walking for how many days? She, he must be really very thirsty and hungry. So when he saw the widow, he said, can you get me a cup of water? And so the widow went. And as she was going, Elijah said, and wait a minute, can you bring me bread, a piece of bread? And what did the widow say? Oh, you know what? I have nothing baked. In fact, I have already just a little flour okay, in my jug, in my, in my container, and little oil in my jug. In fact, I am picking up a couple of sticks because I will bake the last bread that I have, the last flour and oil, and after we have eaten this bread, we're ready to die. Me and my son are ready to die because that's the last supply that I have. There's famine. And the woman said, and the widow said, But since you say, provide you with bread, then let your Lord God be the one to be followed. And what did the woman do, the widow do? She baked the last flour and the last oil. And when she gave the bread to Elijah, we are told by the first book of Kings that her flour never ran out and her oil never ran dry. Take note, my dear brothers and sisters. This is in Sarifat. Where is Sarifat? In Sidon. Now, if you're talking of Sarifat, Sidon, that's a pagan territory. Who is the audience of Jesus? People of Nazareth. The people of Nazareth, they are, remember, they are in the synagogue, Jews. And for you to be compared as a Jew, to be compared to a pagan, oh, that's a big insult. And then Jesus continues and says, Remember the time of Elisha the prophet? There were many lepers in Israel. And yet none to none of them was Elisha the prophet sent. But to whom? Naaman the Syrian. Remember Naaman the Syrian? He's a commander. Unfortunately, even though he was very popular, very powerful, Naaman was a leper. And it happened that there was a little girl in his household, like a servant, who is Jewish, a believer of God. And the girl said, you know, if my master will only go to the prophet, the prophet can actually heal him. And when Naaman, the Syrian, heard that, he went to the king and said, boss, can I go to that prophet, Elisha, that this girl is saying? He said that I can be cured by that prophet. And so Naaman asked a letter from the king in order to go to Israel to present it to the king of Israel. And when he went there, what was the instruction of, of prophet Elisha? 
He said, go to the Jordan River. Wash yourself how many times? Seven times. Remember that in the scriptures, number seven is a number of perfection. So Elijah said, said wash yourself seven times in the, in the Jordan River. What was the re reaction of Naaman? He said, why would I do that? That's crazy. Why Jordan? Jordan, perhaps those who are, who go on pilgrimage in the Holy Land, when you go to the Jordan River, you will think twice of dipping into the Jordan River. It's not really very clean looking. But anyway, when, when Naaman saw that, he said, I won't wash myself there. I would not be cleansed from there. There are better rivers in Damascus, in his place. That's why Naaman did not want to do that, to do it. But the girl and said, if this man only believes in the prophet, he will be healed. When Naaman heard that, he believed in Elisha and washed himself seven times. After washing himself for seven times, what happened to him? He was cleansed. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, don't again forget, Naaman is a Syrian. What does that mean? He is pagan. Again, for a Jew to be compared to a pagan, to a Gentile, that's a big insult. Remember that the, the Israelites or the Jews look down on the Gentiles. That's why notice that in the gospel at the conclusion, after Jesus gave them those two examples, the gospel tells us, they rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. Because they were insulted. What's the point of the story? My dear brothers and sisters, during that time, remember, and even until now, their belief is that the Messiah is only for them and only for the Jews. Unfortunately, they were the ones who did not accept Jesus to be the Savior, to be the Messiah. That's why because they did not have the faith in Jesus, Jesus will not be able to perform miracles in the midst of them. You know, no matter how much a person wants to help us, if we don't allow that person to help us, it will never happen. It is only when we are willing to follow the will of the Lord and to put our trust and belief in Him, can the Lord also work miracles in our lives. My dear brothers and sisters, may we be like that widow who put her trust in the Lord, in the Lord of Elijah, that when she surrenders even the last bread that she has, the God of Elijah will provide for her. Let us be like Naaman the Syrian, who trusted that when Elisha, he believes in Elisha, the God of Elisha will cleanse him from leprosy. May we also be like him, who put our faith in the Lord. And when we do that, we will receive the blessings we ask from him because we believe in him. Thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.